Okay, the next article that I'll be discussing is the other persuasive piece titled You Can't Put a Price on Talent. Professional athletes are some of the most impressive humans on the planet. So again, I labeled my article persuasive just so that you can understand that this is going to be an author giving her stance on the issue. It is not expository. Expository would mean that the author was giving you both sides of the issue and then you're free to make the determination of where you stand on your own. So I labeled the title, the stance and the claim because the author is, you know, is giving you her opinion right there. And her stance is that professional athletes are worth the amount of money that they're paid. The central idea is comes across in that first and then second paragraph, which is really that athletes deserve the money that they make. And Mackenzie Caro, who's the author, opens by discussing the physical toll on the body that professional sports takes. And so she speaks about, again, athletes like LeBron James dedicating their lives, training, traveling, pushing their bodies to the limit. And then she brings up the sometimes career-ending injuries and life-altering injuries that professional athletes sometimes experience. Um, One example she gives is Wesley Walker, the former New York Jet who can't open a water bottle anymore because he's experienced um, so much nerve damage and muscle loss. That right there is an example of an emotional appeal and an anecdote. It's an anecdote because she's telling you a little story. She's making it personal. But it's also an emotional appeal because when you read that line, you can't help but feel bad for someone like Wesley Walker who is unable to do a simple task such as opening a water bottle. And that's designed to get you to side with her because now you're thinking, wow, you know, professional athletes really do undergo a lot of physical torment and their lives are changed forever as a result of the, you know, the physical challenges and injuries that they face, so they do deserve their money. The next argument that she makes is that professional athletes are going to have shorter careers. That's her argument. If you remember in the Jesse Edelman piece, that was a counter argument he addressed. And Edelman's response to that was, his rebuttal was, yeah, they do have short careers, but a lot of professional athletes go on to have careers after their um, their playing days are over as commentators and coaches and things like that. Now, Caro is arguing that they only have five to 15 years to make their money, so they should be paid higher salaries. Another argument that she makes is that professional athletes, um, professional sports generate money. She talks about the people who are employed, like stadium workers, cheerleaders, coaches. So basically, she's saying that professional athletes contribute a lot to the economy, and therefore, they should be paid as a result of all the money they generate. She does bring up one counter argument in the second to last paragraph. She says, it may seem unfair that athletes get paid to play a game. So she is addressing the other side, which is something that Edelman brought up. He says, you know, why are we going to pay LeBron James $70 million to play basketball when there are people out there saving lives and they're making $70,000 a year? So her rebuttal to the counter argument is that we are the people who benefit and we're the ones who pay into it. We're the ones who pack stadiums. We're the ones who buy the gear and the tickets and things like that. And she speaks about the enjoyment that professional athletes bring to the public. And so that's her rebuttal to the, you know, to the counter argument that it's just a game. She says, well, yeah, but a lot of people enjoy watching that game and it's their own personal choice to support it by going to the games and by buying the apparel. So therefore the players should make the money that's, you know, the result of, of all the money that's spent by the fans. At the bottom, she too ends with a rhetorical question, just like Edelman did. You'll see it's a pretty good strategy for ending a persuasive piece because it leaves the reader with something to consider. So the rhetorical question that she ends with is, the work of professional athletes certainly pays off for us. Shouldn't it pay off for them too? And so she's leaving you with that question because she has brought up in a couple of places about the money that's generated from professional sports. And so her argument is going to be if professional athletes are the ones who are responsible for all of the revenue that's generated, shouldn't they in turn be the recipients of that money? Um, I think that's pretty much it for this article. 
So now you've seen both sides of the issue. Um, and I'm going to just show a picture. I don't think I need to go through it in depth. But again, this is on my website. This was the organizer that you were asked to fill out. Let me center it there. So the question is, are athletes overpaid? And I just basically took the, the claims from both articles. So the yes article's stance was that they shouldn't be paid so much. Um, the other, the no side, is that they deserve the money. They they should get, you know, be the recipients of the money that's generated. And then what I did for the text evidence boxes is there was more than two arguments in both articles, but it was up for you to pick. Um, and basically, as long as you have an argument that proves that, you know, proves whatever the claim is, you're good. So for the yes article, I just took the line, where Edelman explains that the average salary for professional athletes is two to five million, whereas the average family makes 54,000. I personally thought that was a really strong point that Edelman made because he's comparing the gross inequality in what a professional athlete would make versus the average American. The other evidence I used for that side was his argument that retired athletes go on to have lucrative jobs after they stop playing sports. And I like that because he was really addressing the counter argument and he was proving it, proving it wrong. He was saying to people like Caro who say, oh yeah, you think that professional athletes' careers are short? Well, when you look at it, they actually go on to have very, very lucrative careers after. And I was just, think, just thinking Michael Strahan, um, he seems to be all over the place after his years playing. And so that fame that he got, that notoriety that he got from professional sports is something that served him very well in other areas. On the other side, um, two arguments I had. One of them was Mackenzie Carroll argues that they deserve the money because, because athletes face injuries that um, are career ending and life altering. And that was the example that she gave about Wesley Walker and about the health problems that follow these athletes well into retirement. And I thought her other strong argument was um, for the economy. She's arguing that journalists, stadium workers, cheerleaders, coaches, all of these people wouldn't have their jobs if it wasn't for professional sports. And so that was a key argument that she has that really asserts why professional athletes do deserve their salaries. On the bottom, that box is going to vary. It depends on how you feel on the issue. Um, I don't know if any of you have biases. I know last year I had a student whose uncle um, had played for the New York Yankees. And so he definitely had a bias. He thought professional athletes earned their money and they deserve their money because he knew somebody who was a professional athlete. If you know somebody who is employed by a professional sports team and that's how they make their living, you're going to have a pretty strong bias that professional athletes deserve their money. Whereas if you're somebody who would love to go to a, an athletic event, but your family just feels like they can't afford to do that. I mean, if you were to go to an, a sporting event, it's easily $200 for a family to go by the time you spend the money for tickets, by the time you get food, by the time you pay for parking. And so you might argue that professional athletes shouldn't be paid so much because if they weren't paid so much, then maybe the average family would be able to go and enjoy more athletic events um, because it would be more affordable for them. So if you're somebody who falls into that category, you're going to have a bias that you don't think it's right that they're making all the money that they're making. But really, it depends on your own personal opinion. If you're somebody who doesn't watch professional sports, you might say, I don't really care either way, but I do think it's ridiculous that they're making all that money. Um, so really, for that last box, the choice is yours.